mean, the stock has run up 50% in the past yeah. three months. It's dipping right now in, in, in overtime. You got an outperform rating, but your price target, I believe, is 1250. We're trading above that. Do you buy on this pullback or do you wait for something deeper? Yeah, so again, I always, I've said this before, don't read too much into the price targets in any given moment. They, they don't get updated every single day and the stocks had a, had a strong run. I really do like Broadcom. I, I mean, look, so I think that they have done their best to try to de-risk the core business. It does have the second best um, AI story in the space in terms of magnitude outside of the, uh, NVIDIA. You've got very significant synergies coming, both in terms of um, uh, operating synergies and growth coming from VMware. I think this is a company that you get into, into 2025 when those synergies are in, it'll be doing ballpark 60 bucks in earnings and 30 billion in free cash flow. I don't think so, those are peak numbers either. I think it continues to compound from there. I still really like the stock. I, I, I think it's still got legs from here. It, it's bobbling right now. We'll see what they say. We'll see what it does tomorrow. It's been a very strong performer. Um, I don't think there's any reason that the, that, that story has to stop them. Broadcom, Nasdaq, AVGO, is gearing up to unveil its expected $10.42 per share in earnings on a whopping $11.72 billion in revenue. So, what's driving this anticipation? Well, the semiconductor giant is set for a potential win in the first quarter, largely riding the wave of increasing sales in artificial intelligence, AI, and the synergies coming from its association with VMware. Now, AI is the star of the show, with predictions putting its revenue at approximately $8.6 billion in F24. The driving force behind this? The expansion of custom ASIC programs for tech titans Google and Meta as per the crystal ball gazers at City. Yet, the analysts aren't just throwing confetti without checking the rest of the room. They see a possible dampener in the non-AI segments, including storage, broadband, and enterprise networking. Despite Broadcom's strides in AI and optimizing the VMware portfolio, these non-AI areas might be dragging a bit. Susquehanna Financial Group seems to be the cheerleader here. Still waving the optimistic flag for Broadcom's integration strategy, the VMware opportunity, and the broader AI networking and Ethernet prospects. Adding some spice to the mix, private equity firm KKR has confirmed a $4 billion deal to acquire the end-user computing division of Broadcom. However, not everything is sunshine and rainbows, with rumors circulating that the sale of its carbon black security business is on pause due to less than impressive offers. Now let's talk expectations. The last three months have been a roller coaster of predictions. Earnings per share estimates have been given a thumbs up four times, but a skeptical eye 14 times, while revenue estimates have seen a lot of nodding with 16 upward moves but only two shakes of the head. So the question is, will Broadcom drop a bombshell beat or will it be more of a slow burn? Broadcom, NASDAQ, AVGO, has been on a wild ride since my last bullish earnings preview and boy, did it make a splash. Since early December, 2023, the stock has soared over 50%, leaving the broader US market trailing behind. Now. With another earnings release on the horizon, let's dive into the current state of affairs. Broadcom is connecting everything. Our technology touches your life every single day. From the latest mobile and home devices, to the cloud, to service provider networks, to software, artificial intelligence, cybersecurity, and critical infrastructure. First off, the last quarter was a solid win for AVGO with a Q4 revenue growth that consensus projections are painting as a massive masterpiece. However, there's a twist in the tale. While revenue is set to skyrocket, the bottom line seems to be stuck in a flat line according to consensus expectations. That's a head scratcher for me, given AVGO's track record of aligning revenue growth with a surge in profitability. Adding some fuel to the fire are recent developments in the AI industry, suggesting that AVGO's management is gearing up for a rosy future. Valuation analysis is also flashing a green light, indicating that the stock is still sitting pretty in terms of attractiveness. Now let's rewind a bit and glance at the rearview mirror. The previous earnings release saw 
AVGO slightly outshining consensus estimates and offering up a juicy guidance boost during the FQ4 2023 earnings unveiling. Yo Y, revenue flexed its muscles, showing a 4% growth, while the adjusted EPS did a little victory dance from $10.45 to $11.06. Now let's shift our gaze to the future. Consensus is placing a hefty bet on Q1 revenue at $11.7 billion, flaunting a jaw-dropping 31% YO-Y growth. Not just that, but a 26% sequential growth is also on the cards. Quite the turnaround from the almost flat dynamic between Q4 2022 and Q1 2023. But here's the puzzling part. While Consensus is hyping up the revenue, they seem to be giving the cold shoulder to the adjusted EPS, expecting it to be almost flat on a UY basis. To me, that sounds like they're missing a beat. The last earnings call didn't drop any hints about potential margin hiccups, making these conservative EPS estimates seem a tad off. To top it off, AVGO has been a bit of a surprise magician when it comes to earnings since FQ1 2020, adding an extra layer of optimism to the mix. So, as the stage is set for another earnings extravaganza, strong buy rating for AVGO remains unshaken. Let's see if it continues to dance to the beat of exceeding expectation. Broadcom, which is reportedly in talks to acquire cloud computing company VMware, the potential deal would rank among the larger tech acquisitions. For more on this, let's bring in Yahoo Finance's Inez Foray for more. Inez, again, this is just a rumor so far. Right. Uh, but again, this would be a pretty massive deal if Broadcom were to try to close on this. Yeah, that's right. It would be a massive deal, and it would also, analysts are saying, would be strategically making sense because Broadcom Broadcom is a semiconductor company and it is it would be uh, increasing its footprint or strategy into the s software as a services industry into cloud computing. Now let's show you a chart of a couple of companies that Broadcom already has acquired back in uh, 2018. It acquired CA Technologies. It also acquired uh, the enterprise security business of Symantec back in 2019. And so you've got Wells Fargo analysts that are saying, look, this makes strategic sense. It deepens its its enterprise uh, infrastructure software strategy. Uh, and back in March, this company had sort of telegraphed that it was going to make, or it was ready to make an acquisition. Broadcom isn't just sitting back after the VMware acquisition last year. It's orchestrating a symphony of strategic moves. The recent news buzzes with the divestment of AVGO's end user computing division, a $4 billion transaction that speaks volumes about the company's commitment to refining its portfolio. It's like shedding the excess baggage to streamline the corporate physique. These divestments might not make huge ripples in earnings or valuation for a juggernaut like AVGO, but here's the gold nugget. They free up management bandwidth. Those units that are no longer aligned with AVGO's strategic trajectory won't be needing the executive spotlight anymore. In the quest for efficiency, AVGO isn't just tidying up. It's also fostering innovation. VMware's recent show and tell at the Mobile World Congress revealed exciting developments in 5G and edge computing. Welcome, we are here in Barcelona at Mobile World Congress. And as you can tell, there's a lot of activity going on right now. Today is the day before the event, and we are gonna give you a behind the scenes look at some of the amazing demos and activations that we've got planned for you. This area, we're focusing on software defined edge. And as you can see, we've got a hospital on wheels and we've got a real ambulance here. So David, walk us through the technology we're showcasing here. Yeah, yeah, so we're really excited about this use case um, around mobile edge. So first line workers out in the field really have connectivity issues. And what we're doing with our technology is streamlining a secure connectivity to the mobile edge. No wonder City is throwing AVGO's name in the ring as one of the top beneficiaries of AI's robust secular trends. The AI party is in full swing and AVGO is riding the wave. BOFA Securities predicts a whopping 50% CAGR for the AI servers market over the next three years. The demand for hardware capable of handling AI models is sending a clear signal. Even NVIDIA's CEO, Jensen Huang, is on the optimistic AI bandwagon. 
projecting strong generative AI-driven demand for the next five years. AI isn't just a buzzword, it's a boardroom strategy. According to BUFA's survey, a mere 6% of 3,500 US companies surveyed are without an AI strategy. A whopping 60% are banking on AI for operating efficiencies and cost savings. It's a safe bet that businesses will keep pouring resources into generative AI capabilities. So, when AVGO's management steps up to the earnings call, optimism is likely to be the vibe. The future, fueled by AI trends, looks promising. Now, let's talk numbers. AVGO has been on a rocket ride, more than doubling in the past 12 months, with a bullish 25% YTD start in 2024. Sure, valuation ratios are playing hopscotch in the stratosphere, but let's not judge a semiconductor by its cover. Seeking Alpha Quant's D valuation grade from three and six months ago doesn't tell the whole story. Enter the discounted cash flow DCF approach. Fed rate cuts are the talk of the town and I'm adjusting my WACC to 9.25% to keep the DCF dance in tune. No major changes in the FCF margin assumptions, just a little tweak to reflect the updated TTM performance. For the base case scenario, I'm sticking with a 12.2% revenue CAGR, a fair bet considering AVGO's strategic tailwinds. Drumroll, please. The DCF model whispers sweet nothings, suggesting AVGO is still undervalued. The fair value flirts with a little over $720 billion, attempting 11% higher than the current market cap. For a company with AVGO's profitability and strategic prowess, it's like finding a golden ticket. But why stop there? Semiconductor stars are lighting up the earning sky, and the AI-driven demand surge is the tailwind of the century. Let's crank up the optimism a notch. A more aggressive revenue growth trajectory, a shiny 14% CAGR, transforms the fair value, giving the business a substantial boost. The fair value of the company is doing a victory lap, soaring to a dazzling $820 billion. That's a jaw-dropping 26% higher than the current market cap. If that doesn't spell surge potential, I don't know what does. And hey, with NVIDIA NVDA recently flexing its earnings muscles and flaunting some solid guidance upgrades, the vibe in the semiconductor space is downright electric. There's a high likelihood that AVGO's management might crank up the guidance excitement too. In the realm of FBR filters, Broadcom reigns supreme, holding a potential 87% share of this crucial market. FBR, the future of RF filters for smartphones and more, brings a slew of perks for consumers. Crystal clear call experiences, lightning fast data transfers, and a longer battery life. And that recent Apple alliance? It's not just icing on the cake, it's a turbo boost to Broadcom's already dominant market share. Now let's talk numbers. Broadcom's financials are like a crescendo, steady, rising, and applause worthy. Revenue and free cash flow on a steady ascent. The balance sheet, pristine, debt profile, under control. And in terms of valuation, it's like finding a treasure chest. The company is, in my opinion, a sweet 11.91% undervalue. Talk about a gem. But like any blockbuster, there's a plot twist. China plays a significant role in AVGO's revenue story, contributing a third of the company's financial saga. Enter potential trade tensions, the geopolitical storm that could rain on Broadcom's parade. So, while the tech powerhouse shines bright now, investors might want to keep an eye on the weather forecast for this potential storm. Now let's not turn a blind eye to the potential plot twists. Picture this, a long-term revenue forecast downgrade. The fair value, which once danced in the $820 billion realm, takes a bit of a tumble to $616 billion. It's still impressive, but it's a 5% dip from the current market cap. Why? Because in the world of discounted cash flows, changes in estimates wield some serious magic, both good and bad. While a guidance cut for AVGO seems like a plot twist straight out of a suspense novel, we're dealing in possibilities here, and it's wise to keep all the narrative threads in check. But wait, there's more drama in this tech tale. Broadcom, 
the growth maestro, has been known to score its growth points through strategic acquisitions. It's like clockwork. Big company, big acquisitions, big growth. However, there's a plot twist looming. The bigger AVGO gets, the more eagle-eyed regulators become. Remember the saga with Qualcomm in 2018? Former US President Donald Trump, with a firm grip on the narrative, blocked that deal, citing national security concerns. So, regulatory hurdles could be a storm cloud on AVGO's horizon, slowing down its revenue growth. But hey, don't let the risks steal the spotlight. The grand finale here is clear. Broadcom is still a strong buy before the upcoming earnings release. Positioned like royalty in the realm of surging demand for cutting-edge hardware that plays nice with those demanding AI models, AVGO is strutting its stuff. The valuation is still as alluring as ever, and those consensus EPS estimates for the earnings release? Well, let's just say they might need to brace themselves for an AVGO beatdown. 